Hello, this is for day 316, a Bible in one year, and our Bible text, Jeremiah chapters 51 to 52, and then Hebrews chapter 9. So let's begin with Jeremiah chapter 51. Jeremiah chapter 51, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in the midst of them, that rise up against me a destroying wind, and will send unto Babylon funners. That shall fan her, and shall empty her land, for in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifteth himself up in his brigandin, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her host. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are trust true in her streets. For Israel had not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul, be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand, that made all the earth drunken, the nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Hold for her, take balm for her pain, if so she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go every one into his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto, the, unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord had brought forth our righteousness, come, and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord had raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. For his device is against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong, set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushes, for the Lord had both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He had made the earth by his power, he had established the world by his wisdom, and had stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttered his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish by his knowledge, every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, the work of errors. In the time of their solicitation, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces men and women, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young, and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces, captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. They shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate for ever, saith the Lord. Set ye up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, 
prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, Minni, and Ashkenaz, appoint a captain against her, cause the horses to come up as a rock. Cater pillars, prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble and sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained, they have remained in their holds. Their might had failed. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. One post shall run to meet another, and one messenger to meet another. They show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end, and that the passenger, sorry, and that the passages are stopped, and the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war are affrighted. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon, is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her. Yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had devoured me. He had crushed me. He had made me an empty vessel. He had swallowed me up like a dragon. He had filled his belly with my delicates. He had cast me out. The violence dancing me into my flesh be upon Babylon. Shall the inhabitant of Zion say, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Galilee? Shall Jerusalem say, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will plead thy cause, and take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea, and make her springs dry. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment, and an hissing without an inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions, they shall yell as lions whelps. In their heat I will make their feast, and I will make them drunken, that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the Lord. I will bring them down I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with a he goat with he goats. How is Sheshach taken, and how is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How is Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? The sea is come up upon Babylon, she is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land, and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither that any son of man pass thereby. And I will banish Baal in Babylon, and I will bring forth at he, out of his mouth that which he had swallowed up, and the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall, my people. Go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. And lest your heart faint, and ye fear. For the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore behold, the days come, that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth, and all that is therein, shall sing for Babylon, for the spoilers, shall come unto her from the north, saith the Lord. As Babylon had caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still, remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded, because we have heard reproach. Shame had covered our faces, for strangers are come into the sanctuaries of the Lord's house. Wherefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will do judgment upon her graven images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. A sound of a cry cometh from Babylon, and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans. Because the Lord has spoiled Babylon, and destroyed out of her the great voice, when her waves do roar, like great, like great waters, a noise of their voice is authored. Because the spoilers come upon her, even upon Babylon, and her mighty men are taken, every one of their bows is broken. 
For the Lord God of recompenses shall, shall surely requite. And I will make drunk her princes, and her wise men, her captains, and her rulers, and her mighty men, and they shall keep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gate shall be burned with fire, and the people shall, la shall labor in vain, and the folk in the fire, and they shall be weary. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Zariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Maaseiah, when he went with Zedekiah the king of Judah into Babylon in the fourth year of his reign, and this Zariah was a quiet prince. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Zariah, When thou comest to Babylon, and shall see, and shall read all these words, then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place, to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate for ever, and it shall be, when thou made, hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it, and cast it into the midst of your breaks. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 52 Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamatal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For through the anger of the Lord it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah, till he had cast them out from his presence, that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, of the month that Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came, he and all his army, against Jerusalem, and pitched against it, and built forts against it round about. So the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. And in the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, the famine was sore in the city, so that there was no bread for the people of the land. Then the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled, and went forth out of the city by night, by the way of the gate between the two walls, which was by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans were by the city round about, and they went by the way of the plain. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king, and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. Then they took the king and carried him up unto the king of Babylon, to Riblah, in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He slew also all the princes of Judah in Riblah. Then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and the king of Babylon bound him in chains and carried him to Babylon, and put him in prison till the day of his death. Now in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar Adan, captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon, into Jerusalem, and burned the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and all the houses of the great men, burned he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldeans that were with the captain of the guard, Break down all the walls of Jerusalem round about. The, ne the Nebuzar Aden, the captain of the guard, carried away captive certain of the poor of the people, and the residue of the people that remained in the city, and those that fell away, that fell to the king of Babylon, and the rest of the multitude. But Nebuzar Aden, the captain of the guard, left certain of the poor of the land for vine dressers and for husbandmen. Also the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases, and the brass and sea that was in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans break and carried all the brass of them to Babylon. The cauldrons also, and the shovels, and the snappers, and the bowls, and the spoons, and all the vessels of brass wherewith they ministered, took they away. And the basins, and the firepans, and the bowls, and the cauldrons, and the candlesticks, and the spoons, and the cups, that which was of gold in gold, and that which was of silver in silver, took the captain of the guard away, the two pillars, one sea, and twelve brass and bulls, that were under the vases which King Solomon had made in the house of the Lord. The brass of all these vessels was without weight, 
And concerning the pillars, the height of one pillar was 18 cubits, and the fillet of 12 cubits did compass it. And the thickness thereof was four fingers, it was hollow, and a chapter of brass was upon it, and the height of one chapter was five cubits, with network and pomegranates upon the chapters round about, all of brass. The second pillar also and the pomegranates were alike unto these. And there were ninety and six pomegranates on the side, and all the pomegranates upon the network were an hundred round about. And the captain of the guard took Sariah the chief priest, and Saphaniah the second priest, and the three keepers of the door. He took also out of the city a new knock which had the charge of the men of war, and seven men of them that were near the king's person, which were found in the city, and the principal scribe of the host, who mustered the people of the land, and three score men of the people of the land, that were found in the midst of the city. So Nebuzar and then the captain of the guard took them, and brought them to the king of Babylon to Ribla. And the king of Babylon smote them, and put them to death in Ribla in the land of Hamath. Thus Judah was carried away captive out of his own land. This is the people whom Nebu Nebuchadrezzar carried away captive in the seventh year three thousand Jews, and three and twenty. In the eighteenth year of Nebuchadrezzar, he carried away captive from Jerusalem eight hundred thirty and two persons. In the three and twentieth year of Nebuchadrezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carried away captive of the Jews seven hundred forty and five persons. All the persons were four thousand and six hundred. And it came to pass in the seven and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, in the five and twentieth day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, lifted up the head of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and brought him forth out of prison, and spake kindly unto him, and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon, and changed his priests and garments, and did continually eat bread before him all the days of his life. And for his diet, there was a continual diet given him of the king of Babylon, every day a portion until the day of his death, all the days of his life. Okay, we're, we're done with Jeremiah. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 9. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances, a divine service, and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was a candlestick, and a table, and a showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had a golden censer in the ark of the covenant, overlaid round about with gold, wherein was a golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant, and over it the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot speak, we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, but as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then spent in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices, they could not make him that did a service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances, imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, be a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and fowls, but by his own blood he entered in, once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats, and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctify it to the, to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of that, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, we, they which are called might, wait, sorry, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. 
For where a testament is, there must also, of necessity, be the death of the testator, for a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of cows and of goats, with water and scarlet wool and high sop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people saying, This is the blood of the testament which God had enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heaven should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves were better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places, made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, not to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often as a high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world had he appeared to put away sin through the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that live for him, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Right, we're done with the Bible reading. Thing, uh, sorry, this again, this is for day 316, a Bible in one year. And we've read Jeremiah chapters 51, 52, and then Hebrews chapter 9. Thank you and God bless.